Hey, welcome back to another video. It is Sarah here. Um, so I wanted to take a second and share with you what the last roughly a little over, well, it's been, been about 17 days now for us since we started um, shutdowns. Okay, so 17 days ago, our schools were shut down, all of that. And it has been an interesting time. And so I wanted to share as um, as a mom, like as a human, as a business owner, the different lessons that I have learned so far and how I plan to take this time and this information and use it to my advantage going forward. Because I believe that any time we encounter something like this, it's a... Um, it's a call for massive reflection and redirection. And I keep hearing people say, oh, you know, I can't wait for it to go back to normal. And, nor and I'm like, y'all, there's going to be no back to normal. Things aren't ever going to go back to the way that they were two weeks ago. And maybe some people don't even realize that yet. But this is going to affect literally whether you choose to let it affect you positively, uh, whether you choose to, it, it could impact some people negatively. These are the kinds of times where how you handle it, how you process it is going to determine how you come through this and what kind of experiences you have after that. Because if you look back, I know that when uh, my great grandparents and stuff like went through the Great Depression, they picked up a lot of negative habits that were just simply out of survival, right? Like they picked up fear-based habits, which whatever. And it, it wasn't even just until recently where I was really able to identify where some of that came from. And it came all the way back from the Great Depression, right? So whatever your mindset is right now, whatever you're feeling, whatever emotions you're embodying, that's going to be carried with you, with your children, how your kids, if you have kids, how they see you reacting to this entire situation, whether it's out of peace, love, trust, um, hope, or whether you're acting out of fear, panic, anxiety, doubt, because how you react to things are very, very different, right? There's, there's even, you know, people being prepared but there's preparedness that's coming from a peaceful place, a uh, place of wisdom. And then you have this preparedness coming from like panic and fear. And I was in the stores the night that, you know, we got the notification or the, you know, the governor went on and said, you know, hey, we're closing everything down. We were in there and we were doing our monthly grocery shopping. And my God, I have never seen ever seen anything like that if you saw my footage of it it was just people just taking arms of shelves and just all into their cart you know and so anyways um getting back to it for me and what this means going forward is i realized that i i realized how dependent on all of that out there i've been i realized how dependent on not, not, not the system, but like the infrastructure of our government. I realized how much I depended on or trusted, hey, I'm going to be able to have food every week because we're always going to have groceries delivered, right? I'm always going to be able to have eggs because there's always a grocery truck there. Um, I'm always going to have access to this. I, I don't need to have extras. So for me, I, I don't need to, you know, have a ginormous you know, room full of like stacks and stacks and stacks of stuff. But I'd say in the future, at some point, what we're going to be working towards next is a little bit more self sustainability, like self reliance, um, not in a crazy way, but in, in a way that's wise in a way that's prepared because I feel like we are in this generation right now where we haven't seen big wars like how previous generations did. They had the depression, they had, you know, all this stuff where people even a hundred years ago were so independent. I have this book that I'm reading and it's talking about like explorer and she's an explorer from the 1840s and 1860s. And she went through the Rocky Mountains on her own and people were settling and they were, 
really making their own way and you had to be like dependent on yourself. You had to get your own food. You had to do it. And they had grit. Okay. Like I'm reading these stories. I was like, dang, these people had grit. They had like a fighter's spirit almost. And it's just fascinating to hear how, you know, 150 years later, we're almost like really soft. And I don't say that in a bad way. I say that in a way like we're blessed because we've had peace for the most part. Like I know that, you know, we were overseas and I know um, I was married to someone in the military. I'm full aware there there were wars going on. But overall, there wasn't a world war. There wasn't World War One. There wasn't World War Two. There wasn't a Great Depression. Um, you know, for the most part, there's there wasn't like huge diseases running rampant and killing everybody like polio or measles and all this stuff. We've got vaccines. Like we're pretty advanced. And so we're almost like up here on this peak, like, oh, we rule the world. And in one instant, in one little bit, I just realized like how frail everything is. Like the the infrastructure and the way that it all works is almost set up on us trusting that it'll be there and not panicking and like leaving like so for example there there was one point where people were like oh they're gonna go to you know global currency and I, I get it but but there there were these people who are who have good lord half a million followers telling people to take their money out of the banks and I'm sitting here watching this like oh my god you guys are come come on you know, like, but then that just made me realize how a few people like that, when, when you do that and you, you know, run on the bank, so to call it, when people act out of fear, like my money won't be there, they're actually bringing about the same thing they were just trying to avoid, where if they wouldn't have done that, there wouldn't have been a problem. Okay, like if you don't try to take your money out of the bank all at once, then the money will always be there because that's how that system works. But the moment you start freaking out, you realize like how frail this whole thing is. And for me, it was just a gigantic wake up call. Like we didn't, we didn't have, um, you know, like my grandma. So my grandma is a child of someone who grew up in the great depression. So my grandma Bev, she always has a freezer downstairs, two freezers. She's got a whole fridge and freezer downstairs and then like a smaller freezer and then this big old chest freezer. And she always has enough food to probably last them at least a good six months, if not a year, okay? Like if anything ever happened. And I realized in, in you know, this instance where I was like, we don't have extra supplies. Um, we're basically living like it's always going to be there. We kind of take it for granted a little bit. Um, and it just really, really, really made me want to, I've always had this love for self-sustainability. Like if you Look at my dream board, which is over there. I wish I could show you that. Maybe I'll show you. I'm going to bring you with me. Okay, let's go for a little, let's go for a walk, which might be challenging because these are the shoes I'm wearing. And I'm wearing them even though I'm working from home because I still want to feel, um, you know, you just still want to feel good, right? So I try to like intentionally create that. Okay, so I want to show you my dream board. <laughs> This is my massive dream board, and it's more like a lifestyle goals board, like a lifestyle vibe board, and then I have my annual goals on the back that I, anyways, you don't need to know that right now. But anyways, what you can see here is I have like a cabin in the woods, and down here it says like sustainability, solar, like all of this, like self-sustainability, um, put my specs on, solar, rugged and remote, oasis, um, yeah, so living in nature. So this is on my board. I'll give you a real good close up there. Okay, so that's on my board. Okay. So I've always really felt um, that that was a really important thing. But we haven't been prioritizing that <laughs> at all. We've been prioritizing like... Um, so there was one of the things that I realized I want to move towards. Solar panel self-sustainability, probably having a small garden, um, purchasing a freezer of some sort, um, and learning life skills, like learning survival and sustainability skills, like having a backup of water. We're on a well right now, which is amazing. Um, but you know, not being, not being reliant on the infrastructure necessarily, because if anything ever happened, or if there was a shutdown, what would we do? So that's what that really, it really made me shift my priorities and realize 
God, I'm so glad that we didn't stay in Florida. <laughs> like, um, Florida is a beautiful place to visit. And this just, I can't believe that we were in Florida seven weeks ago. And we moved right on the cusp of all of this. And God was pretty much just like laying this out for us. Like, hey, get up here. This is where you're supposed to be. Um, I can't believe it. Like, I'm looking out at the lake right now. We're in our dream house. We're on a lake. We've got like... <laughs> I don't know, half mile long driveway. It's crazy. And I'm just super thankful. But um, I also realized in business, so now I'm going to pivot a little bit and tell you, so I want to have water. Um, I want to have like a garden. I want to have seeds. I want to have just that food stuff in case there's never access to food from a grocery store or something, or we get shut down, whatever. I want to know that I could still provide for my family. Um, in business, I realized incredibly how important it is to have multiple income streams and investments. Um, yeah, <laughs> because we had put the majority and focus of our current right now income in helping tourism based clients. Okay, so all of our marketing, all of our advertising campaigns was focusing on the tourism industry. Well, just like that it dried up. It was like gone. And we had to be ready so fast to pivot a different direction in business. Also, imagine having people helping you, okay, like team members, they're, they're remote, so we don't have any on location. Um, but having people able to help you and then in one instant, because now they're all home and focusing on their kids who they now have to homeschool, because that's what they have to do. Um, I, I had no help and I was like, oh my gosh, uh, certain ones of those people were the only ones in my business trained to do a certain skill. So then I was like, if you have a business, you have to have multiple people trained for a job because otherwise, God forbid, anything happens to them, you're freaking screwed. I also realized that your business cannot be dependent on you solely putting in your hours or dependent on your physical ability to work. What I mean by that is prior to this happening, I had gotten sick. Like, um, it wasn't coronavirus. No, it was like, I had just gotten, my kids went back into school. They brought home some germs. My body was adjusting. Okay. But for like one full week, actually it was like 10 days, but for a full week, I didn't work. And that was a big problem because we were a week behind on projects. It was just insane, right? And then when this all happened, we had clients dropping off like flies, like gone. So here you have like about a, a decent chunk of income overnight within 72 hours, gone. And thank God, I also had these people that we were paying also not. So it evened out, but it was just like, holy frick holy frick um yeah so the ability to pivot having more than one person trained in a job in your thing or having at somewhere a place where you've written a training manual or like done videos to train people on your brand because what if you died what if you're a business owner you're leading a brand and you passed away how would you pass your knowledge on to someone how would your business or your knowledge or your skill set live on and benefit your family if you were gone. And I know that's morbid, but like this whole thing really puts in perspective like how we're just like, dang, we're just here. It's a short amount of freaking time. Make the best use of it, right? Like don't waste your time. Um, I also realized having multiple income streams. I'm so grateful that I had the income streams I did of my passive income stream like affiliate marketing, you know, that one and my team, because, oh my gosh, uh, in the span of just a little bit of time, right? So just think of that. So my business income was gone and I'm also not paying people. So that evens out. So that's a, that's a cancellation there. What would have happened if I didn't have this passive income here, my online income stream? I don't know. I would have been done, right? And you have people right now who are like, yeah, you know, invest in real estate. Real estate is great, but real estate right now when people can't pay rent, well, so yeah, I mean, in going in the future, I plan to go into real estate. We are going to have real estate investments. 
an online income stream, and then like a marketable skill that you have. Okay, so those are things that I would recommend. Finding a skill that you have that you can do, um, finding a company or a product or whatever that you can back and partner with, like affiliate marketing, network marketing. I know some of you are like, ew, network marketing. I'm serious, y'all. It is like, <sighs> find the right company, make a lot of money, and then put that into real estate or something else. Cash out, I don't care. Network marketing is a gold mine. Um, and real estate, like honestly, like what happens if you can't work your job anymore? So many people right now, I've gotten probably upwards of 27 messages from people on my friends list saying, oh my God, Sarah, what do you do? I need help. I need help. I can't, I can't provide for my family. And my heart is like, br like literally breaking because I get it. I was a single mom. I had three kids. I didn't have support. My then ex-husband was like cutting me off, you know, um, cause he was mad that I left. And so he didn't pay me for like a span of almost nine months. I get it. I've been there. I was pregnant. I had two kids that were too little to be in school. So I was home. Um, it is a challenge and I'm so grateful that over the past seven years I've created the income streams that I have and that they are online um, and I've leveraged the internet as a tool because otherwise man I could get a little cry because my heart like my heart just goes out and I'm like God, I just want to help these women like I just want to like give them money like donate like it's just crazy so there's that that that's how things have been affecting my business that that's what I've learned um, I've also learned the ability to pivot as quickly as possible is great. And you need an evergreen system in your business, an automated system, okay? So once you've created the thing, you've built it, okay? That's you've cr creation, you got the foundation in there. Expansion, that's the marketing tactics. Automation, that's the duplication. That's what was missing in my business. My business was succeeding and doing quite fine, but only if I'm actively involved. That's a problem. If you can't duplicate your business. And e so even if you're super successful, like I saw people, here's the thing. I saw people who have like ad agencies and marketing agencies and they were making a hundred thousand bucks, right? A month. And then in one instant, they're like, Shh, all my clients are gone. I'm fricked. I don't have an alternate in in income stream. I put all my eggs in this basket. I'm totally frickered right now. And I'm like, yeah, um, and their success was dependent upon them working. So I was like, and when I got sick and then when I couldn't do these other income streams because I had to be the one doing the client projects, I couldn't work on my team. So for the past two weeks, my team and my passive income stream, well, that's not growing because I had to take all the time and focus it on the, the client projects that only me and these other people were trained how to do. So make sure that you're duplicating, that maybe you have an online system, a funnel, some kind of a predictable method for attracting and converting clients on a recurring basis without you being actively involved. Okay, so get that in your business. I'm putting one in there this week. This literal freaking week, we're doing that. I'm training multiple people for different positions in my business, and all of the training is now going in the form of a course for like Sarah Michaels Incorporated, the brand training. So that when someone new comes in, whether it's me teaching them or whether it's, you know, my executive assistant, they're going to be like, okay, watch this. Here's how we handle this. Here's our process for this. Here's how you need to know this. So that way it's duplicatable because man, my business was not duplicatable and it got hit hard. So I'm just really using this time as a lesson to see, okay, this is a yellow flag. This is a warning sign. This is a lesson. How can I do better? How can I improve? How can I make a bigger impact? How can I continue to do better? Um, help more people? And it's beyond me. This is what I'm getting to, too, is like, selfishly, when I got started in business, I wanted to start in business because I wanted this or this or this or this. And that's okay. Like, that's great. Like, I think every person who has success is, is self-motivated at first, but then it goes to a deeper level. It goes to like, I want to create, I want to build, I want to help because you see friends who are suffering. You see people who don't know how they're going to feed their kids because 
they don't have an income stream right now and like how are my kids gonna be affected from this like yeah it's just been huge um we talked a lot about mindset with our kids we talked a lot about uh peace and we've chosen to act out of calmness and preparation and wisdom and not panic and so our kids aren't even freaking out um they know what it is they know coronavirus they've heard COVID-19 but as far as everything else like we've not run out of anything we have more than enough food we were able to get all of our health supplies that we needed and which we feel really blessed and so there we're just turning this into a super fun time at home together and so they they're it's almost like protecting them from what could have been it could have been panic it could have been oh my god like they could have been so impacted by this going forward that they created like these deep roots of there's not enough, I don't have, you know, and we've really done our best to make sure that they know that this is a thing, but they know it's an opportunity. They pray for people who are getting sick, They, you know, and we learn to care for everyone as a whole. Like we're not social distancing out of fear. We're social distancing and practicing because we respect our government even if we don't agree with everything we do, we respect them, okay? Because you have to respect people in authority, something I think certain people could use a lesson in in higher places. Um, so we respect their decisions as our government. Um, and we, you know, it's like we, we do self-distancing, this whole thing out of love, out of concern and care for the elderly in our community or for the people who are immune compromised or, you know, whatever. So it's just a really different, it's just, it's just a different response. It's just a response. And it's a response. It's a thoughtful response versus a reaction, right? Because my natural reaction might be, oh, oh my God, right? But then you go in, you do the work, you get inside of here, you get intentional about what you're allowing in. That's another big thing. Like, whoa, I didn't realize. I can't even scroll social media right now. Girl, I can't even do it. I haven't been on there. I know that's, I know that I have things to say and I know I have to get back on there. Um, but golly gee, I was just like freaking A. I, I, I choose not to because it was this constant bombardment and it almost like felt like this big like, ooh, and I'm like, I don't need this right now. Um, I don't need to know the death tolls. I don't need to hear the horror stories. I don't. I get it. I understand. I'm not ignorant. I'm just being intentional. So there's a really big difference. Ignorance and then intentionality. I'm choosing intentionality. Um, when I feel like I need to be updated and I'm curious, then I intentionally seek out the appropriate sources and I find the information. And if at any point I feel myself getting a little like, ooh, I assess that feeling, I figure out where it's coming from, I work through the emotions, and then I just kind of process it. So um, yeah, there's all of that. I'm really excited because I'm training some people and it feels good. And I'm grateful because we have gotten client requests during this time, like project requests. So while other people's businesses might be going like this, ours is going like this. And I'm so, so, so grateful. Um, we're still launching Co-Creating Queens. I'm still launching the podcast because um, <laughs> I feel like now more than ever, people need that message. They need it. So thank you so much for watching this video um, and letting me share what I've learned with you. This is super therapeutic for me and I'm very grateful for each and every one of you. I'm praying that you stay safe. I'm praying that you stay healthy. Um, I'm praying that you use this time to be intentional and make some freaking memories. Like, oh my God, go make memories. Go have fun. So that your kids will look back and be like, yeah, it was crazy. But guess what mom did? She let us have pajamas and we had a popcorn party and we jumped on the bed. And it was just like fun. Okay, because whatever you do during this time is going gonna, is gonna to be carried. If you have kids, it's going to be carried with them. Right? So just let them see the fun. Let them see the good. Um, so that they can come out of this. We can all come out of this in the best possible way. So thanks so much. Um, I will see you in the next video and I'm hoping you have an absolutely fabulous week. See ya.